In today's video, we're going to introduce the field of chemical analysis and explain what's meant by the terms purity and formulations. Now, chemical analysis, which is also known as analytical chemistry, is all about the instruments and methods that we use to separate, identify, and quantify different substances. And over the next few videos, we'll be taking a look at some examples of these, like paper chromatography for separating different pigments from a mixture, filtration and crystallization to isolate solids from liquids, and distillation to separate out different liquids. We'll also look at some chemical tests, including the ones to identify these four common gases. First though, we need to get used to some terminology. In chemistry, a pure substance is something that contains only one type of compound or element, so isn't mixed with anything else. For example, we could have pure water, which only contains water molecules, or pure sodium chloride, because each of these is its own compound. However, if we were to mix the two, we couldn't say that we have pure salt water, because it's now a mixture of two different compounds, and so it isn't pure. Now, whether a substance is pure or impure is actually pretty important, because only pure substances melt and boil at specific temperatures. For example, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, while sodium chloride melts at 801 degrees Celsius. And we can use these facts to help us identify unknown substances. So if we had a liquid, and we didn't know what it was, but when we tested it, it boiled at 100 degrees Celsius, then we could be pretty sure that it was water. And we would consider this a physical test, because we're testing the physical properties of that substance. Whereas if we reacted it with another chemical to find out what it was, we'd consider that a chemical test. And the same goes for other pure substances. We can test their melting and boiling points in the laboratory, and then look them up in a big data book to see which chemical they could be. On the other hand, impure substances, like our salt water, don't have specific melting and boiling points. Instead, they melt and boil over a range of temperatures, depending on how much of each substance there is in the mixture. In general, having impurities in your samples, for example salt in your water, will lower the melting point, but increase the boiling point. For example, salt water has a melting point of about minus 2 degrees Celsius, rather than 0 degrees for pure water, and a boiling point of around 100.5 degrees, rather than 100 degrees. The next term we need to look at is formulations, which are mixtures that have been prepared using a specific formula, so that they contain precise amounts of different components, and so can have a particular function. It's effectively like a recipe, but instead of a meal, you're making a particular mixture which could be used for a specific purpose, like fuels, cleaning agents, paints, medicines, alloys, fertilizers, and even food and drink. The important feature of formulations is that the different components are always present in the same proportions, and each of the different components might contribute a different property. For example, if you were making some green paint, you would need components that give it a green colour, components that help it stick to the wall, and various other components, depending on the particular type of paint that you're trying to make. So once you've tried out a few different combinations, and you get it right, that would be your formulation, which you could then use to make it over and over again, using that same formula. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam-style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. 
So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.